Today, I'm going to show you how to develop black and white reversal movie film at home. If you searched online to figure this out, you probably got overwhelmed like I did when I first started. But hopefully, this video will show you that the process is pretty simple and very economical. I've also posted an extensive how-to on the FPP website that will be a great companion for you in the darkroom. Let me get a few basics out of the way. The process I'm about to show you is for black and white reversal movie film. Reversal film means a positive image. Think of a slide or a transparency. You can load reversal film into a projector and show the movie on a wall or screen for all your friends and family to enjoy. Today, I'll be showing you how to develop regular 8mm film. This process also works with just about any other format of movie film like Super 8, Double Super 8, or 16mm. You can even use the same methods to process 35mm or 120 black and white slides. First, let's talk about supplies. If you shoot a lot of movie film like I do, it makes sense to invest in the equipment and chemicals to do this at home. Most importantly, you need a tank. The best option I found is the Lomo UB-1 tank. These tanks were originally made in Russia and the Ukraine. They're no longer in production, but you can find used ones on eBay. They'll cost between 150 and 250 bucks. These UFO looking tanks have several parts. A locking lid, an agitator, adjustable reel, and a hose for the chemicals to drain out. The adjustable reel can handle two rolls of regular 8, Super 8, or Double Super 8 film. Each reel holds 50 feet of film. Let's talk safety. You'll need good, tight-fitting goggles. You'll also need chemical safe rubber gloves. I recommend a pair like these that go up to almost your elbow. You're also going to need a mask and containers to store the chemicals. I use plastic jugs because they're harder to break. Let's discuss the chemicals themselves. Most of the chemicals need to be mixed with water. Don't use tap water because it usually contains minerals and other deposits that can exhaust your chemicals. Distilled water is cheap and it'll make your chemicals last longer. You'll also need a black and white developer. I like to use Photographer's Formulary D19 Substitute. Then there's the bleach. This is dichromate bleach, not the stuff you use in your laundry. Dichromate is very dangerous and caustic, especially in powdered form. Next comes the clearing bath. It's a solution of sodium sulfite anhydrous and water. Then there's the fixer. I use the FPP Fideli fixer, but most other products will work too. Finally, you'll need a wetting agent. I use Kodak Photoflow. After you're done developing, you'll need something to dry the film on. I found this wire rack online for under $40 and it works perfectly. Now we're ready to mix our chemicals. I'm going to skip the fixer because there are plenty of videos online on how to do that. For the developer, just follow the instructions on the box. The D19 comes in packets like these. Next is the bleach. Measure out 1500 milliliters of water. Then measure 70 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Make sure you're wearing your gloves and goggles. Carefully add the acid to the water. Never do it the other way around. Set the water solution aside. Next, we'll need the potassium dichromate. It's an orange powder and it's extremely hazardous. When measuring, make sure you have a clean, non-porous surface to work on. I like to put my scale on a sheet of white paper so I can see if I've dropped anything. Carefully measure 15 grams. Make sure you're working with goggles, gloves, and a face mask. Ingesting or breathing even a small speck of this stuff can do a lot of damage, so take it seriously. Carefully add the dichromate to the water solution. Give it a gentle stir. Immediately clean up your scale and your work surface. Carefully pour the mixture into your jug. The clearing bath is super simple. Measure out 1500 milliliters of distilled water. Then measure 140 grams of sodium sulfite and add it to the water.
Stir it carefully until it's completely dissolved. You should already have your fixer ready to go, and the wetting agent comes pre-mixed. So, now we're ready to start developing. My Lomo tank is locked and loaded with one reel of 8mm film. Remember to load the film in complete darkness. Make sure the chemicals are at the proper temperature. They should all be 20 degrees Celsius. Before we start putting chemicals in the tank, note that it drains using gravity, so make sure the hose stays up above the tank, or the chemicals will spill out and you'll have a big mess. First comes the developer. You'll need enough chemical to cover the film, plus a little extra just in case. For one roll of 8mm movie film, I use about 1400 milliliters. Start a timer for 8 minutes. Immediately jiggle the agitator up and down for about 5 seconds to remove any air bubbles. Twist the agitator 90 degrees and let it sit for 20 seconds. Agitate every 20 seconds until the timer is up. How often you agitate supposedly affects the sharpness of the film. I don't know if it's true, but I've had great results with this method. When you're done, carefully lift up the tank and place the hose in your container. Drain the tank until you hear the famous Lomo burp. Now you need to rinse. Use water that's about 20 degrees Celsius. Fill the tank, agitate the spindle several times, and drain. Do this another two or three times. Now we have to bleach. This stuff is nasty, so make sure you have your gloves and your goggles on. Add it to the tank and start the timer for seven minutes. In this step, you need to agitate constantly. After about a minute and a half, you can take the lid off the tank. Carefully lift the reel out of the tank and inspect the film. You're looking for faint yellow images on a clear film base. Carefully put the reel back into the tank and keep agitating until the seven minutes are up. Drain the tank into the bleach container. Rinse again with water until the water runs clear. You don't want any yellowish orange liquid coming out of the hose. Next, we need to clear. At this point, the film is no longer light sensitive, so we can do this with the lid off. Cover the film with your clearing bath and set a timer for two minutes. Agitate the spindle every so often. After about a minute, check the film. You should see a clear base and slightly less yellowish images. Drain the clearing bath into its container. Now comes re-exposure. This part of the process turns the film into a positive image. Hold the reel in front of an electric light for two to three minutes. Turn the reel a few times to make sure the film is evenly exposed. Now it's time for the second development. Add your D19 to the tank. Set a timer for five minutes. Agitate the same way you did with the developer. After about a minute, Inspect the film. You'll see a much darker base with black or gray images. Now we fix. Add the fixer to the tank. Set a timer for four minutes. Agitate the spindle every 30 to 40 seconds. Drain the fixer back into its container. Now it's time for the final rinse. This time, your water should be a little warmer than usual, somewhere between 22 and 24 degrees Celsius. Let the film rinse for about five minutes. After the five minutes are up, add a few drops of your wetting agent. Agitate very gently for one to two minutes. Avoid creating too many bubbles in the wetting agent. Time to dry your developed film. Carefully shake off any excess water. I use this drying rack to dry my film. I attach the film with masking tape and loop it through. Once the film is completely dry, 
it's ready to go on a reel. Because this is regular 8mm film, I need to slit it before projecting. I found this Lomo slitter on eBay. Just pull the film through, and the slitter cuts the film lengthwise down the middle. Finally, splice the two ends of the film using cement or press tape. And there you have it, film that you can load onto a reel and project. Oh, and if you want to scan your film, you have a couple of options. One is to send your film to a professional lab, or you can invest in something like this. This is the Wolverine Movie Maker, and it's the one that I use at home. It scans at about 720p. It's not professional quality by any means, but it's a great gadget for the home movie enthusiast. I'm Owen McCafferty for the Film Photography Project, and thanks so much for watching.